we need to define what is over exploitation. The question is that earlier concept of over exploitation, if you look into the textbook of 1960s and 70s, is that the amount of rainfall that is being recharged into the ground, only that much you are supposed to take. That is the safe area. Now the latest concepts have come now. Even if you look at the latest textbooks on groundwater, they say that you take out as much water as it is there, subject to condition 1, 2, 3. Those conditions are that the water quality should be maintained, there should not be sea water intrusion, there should not be subsidence, and so on and so forth. So we need to define these threshold value for over exploitation for individual watersheds. Then only we can talk about ill effects of this over exploitation. Just talking about over exploitation and quality situation doesn't work. We need to define clearly what is this threshold value of over exploitation for a given basin. Then only we can formulate the benefits. This is my view. And just kind of one, one, uh, one word to it. See, the measurement is a very critical function. Unless measurement issue is fixed, how much is withdrawn also in a very cost effective way, now it can be done also. This Without this, we cannot address this issue. Dr. Nidhi. In groundwater estimation methodology, over exploitation is clearly defined. That is, if the stage of development is more than 90%, plus one more factor is that that is what level trend in that area. You are semi groundwater board, as well as state groundwater departments are continuously monitoring certain fixed stations throughout the country, 3,000 stations, both departments put together. And that long term trend in the water level, both pre monsoon as well as post monsoon, is taken into consideration, and plus the stage of development. So it is not fair to say that we have not defined our um, many other riders out there. That is uh, responding to it. And uh, in reference to the presentation, I have one or two points. One is it is not correct to say that the administrative boundary is taken for assessment, especially in hard rock areas, as per the methodology, it is very much well defined that watersheds or micro watersheds are the assessment units and accordingly it has been done in most of the hard rock terrains. For example, from Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Maharashtra. It has been done, so it is not fair to say that this is uh, administrative work. And uh, regarding barefoot, uh, hydrologist. Uh, okay, we can create para -hydro hydrogeologist by imparting some trainings or capacity building that we are because there is we agree that there is a dearth of experts in the field of groundwater and everyone acts as a groundwater scientist. So in the department from the department of some groundwater board and even some of the state departments, they are monitoring and creating awareness creating programs and trainings. We are reporting even last year we have organized five training programs for all the PRD, RDPR engineers those who are working in the field and create para hydrogeologists so that they can let on act on this. And second important, especially uh, in terms of, for example, coming out with, again, I'm you know, setting an example of this drinking water security plan with village. I mean, if, unless we do not have these kind of para professions, how do we are going to, that's going that's to ensure these kind of initiatives? That's that's for that, for that, we need a kind of trade para professions. Yes. And and uh, and I I see a great opportunity uh, in these kind of initiatives because now government is putting uh, this this whole concept of block resource centers across country. But unfortunately, in last two years it is not coming up there. I mean, if uh, these kind of these kind of example we can take forward.